Here's another seemingly simple topic, but for beginners, there are a couple of tips and tricks that'll really help you. And for even advanced people, I might save you a little bit of pain in the future. First of all, breadboards, what are they? Breadboards are used for making electrical connections between components and wires. It's pretty simple. You don't have to solder. It's very quick for prototyping. And in this example, you can see I built my own breadboarded Arduino compatible microcontroller. Here's the microcontroller in the middle. I have a crystal. I have capacitors, resistors, a button, an LED to indicate power. All of this is connected on this breadboard and the breadboard is helping implement those electrical connections. So what do you need to know about them? Well, first of all, they come in many different varieties. Some of them even have posts on them for connecting power, but these are the, the ones you're typically gonna find. Here's a full size, a half size, and a mini. Typically, they all have adhesive backs, which allow you to attach them to things like this, which is a prototyping shield for Arduino. You can actually plug this right into my Arduino, and I have this beautiful little breadboarding area for making circuits. Another thing to note is that they have power rails on them. These power rails are typically detachable. You can fold them down, get rid of them if you don't need them, save some space. Even the large ones, you can bend them. It's a little more effort and get rid of them. Now, we're gonna look at this half size just because it works on camera really well. What you need to know about breadboards. Number one, power rails. They're typically marked positive and negative. I've seen them positive on the left, negative on the right. I've seen them all different ways. There's lots of different manufacturers, but they're typically labeled blue line is negative, red line is positive. That's just there to indicate what you would use them for. Sometimes you might not even use them as power lines. You might use them as just expanding a whole bunch of pins for a project. Here's a tip for more advanced users. These power rails are connected vertically. So this little spot here is connected all the way electrically to this spot. So it doesn't matter where you plug it in. If you were to put in five volts up here, negative, you would get five volts out here. There are plenty of manufacturers out there where about halfway down the board, there isn't a connection. I've built circuits and said, why am I not getting power? What's going on? And then what I would end up doing is adding a little jumper right here to here. And these are electrically connected now. I've even seen one, just one, where each one of these rows was not connected electrically. It's very strange, um, but they're out there. So be aware of that. You might want to test it if you all of a sudden are having power issues. Double check those boards. Now, the power rail right here is connected all vertically. The breadboard area is connected horizontally. So if you look very closely here, pin 30F is connected electrically to G, H, I, and J. All of these are connected. So if I were to put in an LED, say positive right here and negative into this row, and I wanted to make an electrical connection from the positive to the positive ground rail, I would, could plug it into here, 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 or here. It doesn't matter. All of these are connected to this lead of the LED. Same with the negative. All of these are connected together. Fairly simple concept. Now, on the main field of the breadboard, there's this gutter. This row is not connected electrically to this row. So why do they have this gutter in the middle that's not electrically connected? There's a good reason. Let's take a look at this AT Tiny. This is another microcontroller, Arduino compatible. And if I plug it into here, you can see there's a dot that indicates pin one right here. But what happens to pin eight over here? I don't want pin eight connected to pin one. So if I needed to add an LED, say to pin eight and pin seven right here, I can add something different to pin one. And that's why there's a gutter down the middle. If you need to connect all of these together, just simply add a little jumper in the middle. And now that entire row here is connected together. Hopefully you learned a little bit about reading schematics, creating jumper wires and building circuits on breadboards. Now it's time to start programming that Arduino.